off with the colors They kinda tell me what I'm thinking I fell in love with the way we are And the way we lose it There's something different about us And the reason Looking my eyes and holding me close I know you won't let me down For the rest of the night Until break of dawn Baby, it's the two of us I know you won't let me down Alright, we are at Children's Hospital. That took us an hour and a small detour. I don't know why it took us the last little route, but it did. But, oh my gosh, the sun, <laughs> super bright. Um, I'm here with Abby. She doesn't like to be on camera. Now turn right. But I want to... Watch out, watch out. What? Yeah, I can see her. It's okay. Um, we are here for her CT scan, a consult with the surgeon, and an appointment with the um, pediatric anesthesiologist. Um, so we have a couple hours here. Um, Jason followed in his car, and unfortunately he didn't have the carpool lane, so even though it took us an hour to get here in the carpool lane, he's further behind us. So we're gonna go get checked in for the CT scan, and then um, hopefully he'll get here soon. So we had to wait like an hour and a half after her CT scan and I can't film the CT scan. So hopefully I can find some videos online <laughs> of the actual CT machine. It's actually the company that I volunteer for that, that makes the, the scan. Anyway, so then we had an hour and a half to wait before our appointment with the dentist, with the surgeon. Um, um, so we went and got cinnamon rolls and sat and watched our phones for an hour and a half. And now Abby is here in the x-ray room um, getting her x-rays and final scans, um, getting ready for surgery. He just wants the final look and exactly where she's at right now. And then surgery's in just over two weeks. Jason went back to work. We'll give you more of an, uh, an account of everything that happened at the hospital here in a little bit, but we are at Old Navy and we're gonna get our Christmas jammies. They just get pajama bottoms, but they're on sale today. And Abby was like, we need to go get them. kind of an interesting day, huh, Ash? Yeah. Taking her to cheer, we're a little late to cheer. I'll explain that in a second after I get her into cheer. And then I'll give you an update on all of our appointments today with Abby. Um, she really does not like to be on camera or to have me have the camera out talking. She will B-roll it all day with me. <laughs> she just doesn't like to be around when I'm having to talk. So that's why there's not much she just doesn't like it. She doesn't like it. She understands. She actually doesn't want me to film anything of the surgery. Yeah, I'll do that when we get there. But understand, I'm not going to film her fate during the surgery or during any of the process, obviously. But that I want to document the process. And she's like, okay, just be cautious. So we're going to drop this one off really quick. And then I will 
kill you. Three minutes late. So it's not that bad. No, you're you're a half hour late. It's fine. Yeah. She won't care. She hasn't been feeling good, and I'll explain that. I'll and just say you're a basket say, case. Yeah. As you just told Grandpa. Mm -hmm. All right, I almost forgot to like pull the camera back out. I look like I've had a day. So we'll kind of backtrack. At Ashley's situation, um, it was 15, 20 minutes um, before her time to go to cheer and her stomach was like in a knot. I had a, you know, it likely related to eating. I wasn't quite sure. Her temperature in her ear was like 102, but in her, um, on her forehead, it was like 99. And I was like, I don't know if you have a fever or not. But then the other issue she has is her back has been really, really hurting her. We can't tell. Sometimes it's a shooting pain in her lower spine, and other times it's an all over back, and it just aches. And she just she can't sleep at night. It's really achy in the evenings. She seems to go to school just fine. I think maybe she just deals with it when she's at school. I mean, she was in absolute tears and kind of having a breakdown and then decided to go get herself into the bath instead of going to cheer. I'm trying to get any fever, if there was a fever, to go down and to kind of, she said sometimes the bath kind of helps her stomach, kind of lets that muscle cramp kind of loosen up. So she did that. She came back down and we were going to be late to cheer at that point. And she just, I said, you, you can just stay home. I've already emailed your coach and told her the situation. I might actually take you to the ER tonight and have your back looked at and she just said no the bath helped let's go to cheer so she's at cheer I don't know if that's gonna change I don't know if she's I'm waiting right outside the door in case the coach sends her out we'll just see how she does tonight I might end up in the ER with her later tonight if it gets worse because or in the morning I don't know because I just at this point with her back it's been a week and a half this isn't just tonight and so I don't really know what to do about it at this point I talked to my dad about it I was giving him an update about Abby and he said let's let time let's let some more time go by unless it's like always like the shooting pain she was in tonight then I'm gonna take her in but he said let's just let this if it can go away if it can come back and go away let's see what um happens so we're gonna put her on hold and kind of watch her over the next week or two so for abby the whole appointment went great every step of the way in fact one of the nurses actually every single nurse that was taking us along the way to all the different appointments and guiding us where we needed to go they all just said i'm impressed that you got all these appointments all stacked up right next to each other today um that's really impressive your team did a great job at making sure um you could get this all done in one day they were like that doesn't always happen so kudos to whoever put this in chart in in into place for you so that was excellent to know that like we got some good treatment um, getting ready for the day and then so we met with the um, did the CAT scan met with the surgeon um, and his nurses and they kind of went over um, some of the pre-op stuff gave us that you know the whole paper of what she's gonna be able to eat after the surgery I guess it's post-op care she's on a liquid diet for at least three weeks if not four weeks and then she shifts to a soft food diet where she cannot chew anything for up to six weeks so then it'll be like applesauce and it'll be like she can't chew pasta Pasta. Like it has to be like, anyway, it's going to be a process. So then we talked with the surgeon about her pain management. Nothing new there. He's understanding of that. We talked about how long she would stay in the hospital. And he said on day two, it's going to be her choice. If she wants to go home and be more comfortable in her own bed, she is welcome to go home and we'll come up with a new pain management plan for her to do at home. Um, but if she's comfortable with what we're doing with her pain meds via IV, if that feels more comfortable from her, for her, then we're going to keep her a second night. He's like, she's covered. She can stay, you know, for a couple days and be covered with insurance. And, and I think once we can, if she gets beyond day three, that's where you start feeling a lot better anyway. And that's when she likely would be able to go home. It's unfortunate because they said that the hospital is pretty busy right now. So there's a really high chance we're sharing a room with another patient, but they try and get teenagers, not with babies. <laughs> it's a children's hospital, so I get it. But they were like, it's a lot harder for teenagers to understand and be able to cope with newborns and babies crying at two in the morning than it is with newborn and newborn or baby and baby and baby and four-year-old. You know what I mean? And so they're going to try for that. We do have approval for both Jason and I to stay the night, um, depending. I mean, the rooms are big enough for both adults to stay the night, even if it's a double room. She said, you just might be more comfortable with only one of you staying. And we weren't planning on both of us staying unless she's, if she's having a horrible time the first night, Jason just will stay late until she's kind of comfortable in bed and settled. And then he'll likely go home, take care of the kids 
kids get you know showered and cleaned up and then he will likely just come back the next morning hours later so he can get a good night's sleep and then I might take a chance to go home and shower the next day we'll just play it by ear then we met with the anesthesiologist and I thought we were gonna actually meet with the specialist we just met with um one of the staff members they didn't really read her chart necessarily they didn't understand her pain management plan so that kind of had me worried because I and I even told her that I said you should know about this whole situation with her pain management the surgeon knows about this so this is concerning to me so I kind of re reiterated things to her and I said this needs to be like this needs to be taken care of like when she comes out of surgery and while we're in the hospital like this can't be something that we drop she can't just do ibuprofen and Tylenol and hope that it'll overlap it's not gonna work um you have to and then surgeon is already okay with the the oxy and the extra pain management through the IV like I need everyone to be on the same page with this I need anesthesia and whatever I need your department to be on board with it as well so we kind of clarified all that um we did find out that she is not going to be wired shut necessarily. I don't know if it's a different, an upgraded type of surgery, but the doctor doesn't want or need to have her wired shut, but she will be elastic wired shut. Um, she cannot open her mouth for four weeks at least. And then that's when she can do a soft diet, soft food diet. And I don't know how much she can open her mouth at that point. We'll find that out um, as we get closer to um, surgery. The unfortunate thing was we weren't able to do the um, consult part of designing her face quite yet because one he wasn't planning on doing that today and I, I wasn't my understanding but also he has to take the final scans out of what her jaw looks like today and we did all these scans and so he has to take those final scans and then design it he's like because her jaw has already changed from the scans we did it back in August that's only a few months ago because of the wires that she's been progressively got getting on on her teeth from the orthodontist which we still need one more wire which he thought it was going to be on today so that was kind of an oops on the orthodontist fault like air he was kind of like why doesn't she have that on and I said I told the orthodontist exactly when the, the surgery surgery date is and she should know when that wire needs to go on and he was like yes she should know so I will be giving her a call tomorrow and I will let you know if I need to have Abby run in and go put that wire on if they're worried about her teeth moving again before surgery based on that wire getting put on I'm gonna have to have her come back in and get scans on right before surgery and we'll have to redesign he's hoping we don't have to do that so he's gonna call the ortho tomorrow and they'll make a decision tomorrow and then in a week from now if we don't have to do the whole wire change, if we just get it on right before surgery, then we'll do a Zoom appointment with the doctor next week, I believe, within the next seven to 10 days. And we will do a Zoom consult designing what Abby wants changed based on where the new jaw is going to be placed. And so that'll just be a quick hour appointment and he'll have his screen up on the Zoom call and we'll just be able to, he'll design it with Abby right in front of us. And I told my dad tonight, I said, do you want me to screen record that video call? And I would have loved to see my dad's face, but he was like, oh, oh, that would be so cool. Oh, that would be, he's, this part of the process has been so intriguing to my dad. And so I'm going to screen record it, not only partially for you, I won't film my doctor's face, but I might screen record and show you part of this process of Abby, but I'm going to show it to my dad, the whole thing, because he's very curious about it. So we'll do that in about a week, week and a half. Surgery is coming up. I'm not being very specific on when the surgery is just out of privacy, but um, it's coming up very, very fast. All of these appointments, I'm like, oh, so today when I got home, part of why I didn't film when I was at home in between coming home and then coming out with Ashley, I was just scrambling. I was going through all of my girls' um, Christmas list. I have them all set up on notes and they all have links to all of their, let me show you you. This is Ashley's. There it is. So that's her, <laughs> her wish list, if you will. Chelsea's is cute because she actually has a picture of, she, Chelsea's funny. She doesn't search for things on Amazon necessarily. She searches for things on Pinterest. So then, so like a shoe, she has this and it's like, you know, a, a, a shoe. <laughs> So then I have to take, well, that one actually, she has a link, but there's other things. There's other sweatshirts or pants or little trinkets or something. And she's just taking a screenshot from Pinterest and I'll click on it to, uh, some of them are links to Pinterest, but then it's like, it's not an actual link to buy it. It's just someone's cute out. So then I have to do a Google image search to find it, see where I can buy it, see if I can get it on Amazon. Cause I'm trying really hard to not buy anything on Shein or Timu. I'm, I think I'm done for now buying 
relying on those two websites. Um, and so anyway, so I was going through all of their lists, writing it down, like I said I was going to, and kind of making sure I don't overbuy for one, don't underbuy for another, um, and getting fun things, things they need, that's my rule. Something they want, something they need, something to wear, something to read, and they don't always ask for something to read anymore. I no longer can kind of give them cute little board books or, you know, chapter books to read, but I do have some fun things that are just a little extra this year, so it's going to be really fun. So I spent most of my time mapping out. I have a very large Amazon purchase. I need to see when my next credit card statement <laughs> clears so that I can maybe get it onto the next month's credit card statement <laughs> so I can you know, fast forward paying that bill. It's a very large Amazon cart so far, but I think by tomorrow I'll be able to click order on that and start getting those in. And I have one more order I did today. And then I made a list of the things that I can't buy online. And I can, like I order, I put a list of everything I can buy at Target, everything I can buy at Ulta. I have teenagers, girls, so Ulta is <laughs> almost as big as Target. And I could order on Ulta.com, but those kinds of things I like to actually go in the store. So anyway, I I'm, I'm I kind of felt panicked did it today, like knowing my time is going to be occupied taking care of Abby, making food, making sure she's okay. Anyway, so that's what I was doing all afternoon, but I feel so much better about it because I have a plan, things are bought. I have, when I have quick minutes to run, I go to Target four days a week. Who am I kidding? Um, I'm going to get things bought paid for, set aside so I don't lose anything so that when I am home with her recovering, I can dedicate my time to um, sending out Christmas cards, um, wrapping presents, you know, do, making her food, making some fudge for Christmas. I can do home things and not have to worry about going out. Um, but the first part of this video wasn't very long. I got home and I had three minutes of footage and I was like, that's not going to make for very much of a video, but it's because Abby doesn't like to be filmed. And it's also at a hospital. I shouldn't film when I'm at the hospital. I can't film the CAT scan machine. I can't technically film the x-ray machine. I just kind of sneak my camera in there when they're not looking. I don't know. Abby, um, she tucked herself into bed as soon as we got home at about two. She deals with her stress and her nerves and her panic in her own way. She won't come on here at all and talk about like her thoughts and feelings about it before or after. It's just not her um, thing. But just from me, just know that she is happy about having the surgery. She is excited to not be in pain in a couple months. <laughs> it's nice to know that it's going to be covered and taken care of and she'll be fully healed by the time we get to go on our trip to Japan and go to Hawaii. And I think it's just going to be really good timing to celebrate the end of this process for her. Um, and the surgeon today, he said it quite well. He was like, I just really appreciate you guys being understanding and patient to get us to this point. I'm sorry we had to delay it from the summertime to now. And I said, no, 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 you don't know. It's fine. Like we're not going to force a surgery before she's ready to have it. And he's like, I know. I just, you guys have been very nice um, with this whole process. It's been wonderful to work with you. And I said, I need you to understand you picked us. And he was like, you remember that? And I said, you picked us to be our surgeon. You chose Abby. He said, I am going to be your sur surgeon. I am going to get rid of your pain. And he said, that means a lot to me that you remembered that. Cause he's, he's like, I did. I did choose her. I did want to help her. And as a mom, you can't ask for more than to have someone else to advocate for your kid. So you can't ask for more than that, especially in the medical field. So wish her really quick. My battery is dying. If you guys wouldn't mind, um, my PO box is down in the description. Um, PO box 815 in Issaquah, Washington, 98027. Would you send Abby a card? I would love to have physical cards for her and surprise her with that in the hospital, either right before the surgery or as she's trying to recover. I would love to have you send her cards. I would love to give that to her. And I know she doesn't come on here very much for you guys. I think that would go a long way for her and uh, to let her know that other people are watching out for her. Cause I know you guys are. And you guys are her advocates too. So I really appreciate that. And I will talk to you guys soon. I will see you guys next time. Take care. Thank you.